Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back. In this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a little bit of a cleanup, because there's a few things about the code that could be a little bit better, and since I haven't made a video in three months, it's probably good to sort of get reacquainted with the code. So, first thing we're going to do, our leveling calculation. As it turns out, this was actually wrong, sort of because all of the numbers, all the constants I have in here, all of these are integers. So that means the calculation is being done with integers. And that's causing a bit of a problem. So to make the calculation actually be correct, I'm just going to change absolutely everything to double. And I don't think absolutely everything needs to be a double, but I'm going to just be overkill and do everything as a double anyways. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that doesn't need to be a double, but making that a double anyways. And why are you... Oh, at that point that's an integer, so that can be 1. And our constant, make that a double. And that right there should fix our leveling calculation. So there we go, that fixes the first issue. Now, the next issue is our item. Here's the thing. The way we are doing items right now, all items have to know about the player. And, well, while that works, that's not the most desirable way to do it. Ideally, you should be able to just place an item in the world, anywhere, without having to know what the player is. The player can just run over and pick it up. So, to make that a little bit better, we're going to get rid of this system right here. We're going to just get rid of this. That doesn't need to be there anymore. And that doesn't need to be there either anymore. And in our pickup, I'm just going to comment that out, just to remind me that I still need to do it. And in our update, that can go away. And yeah. I notice this, once it actually is implemented, is going to make this code in here a lot cleaner. And we can also get rid of a whole bunch of imports, so I'll just do Control shift i because I'm lazy. And yeah. So there. That gets rid of all that. But now we need to actually determine when our player hits an item and pick it up. Fortunately, this is pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the update class. And I'm going to create an array list of game objects called, I'll just call it O. Well, I'll call objects just to be a bit more descriptive. It'll be a new array list of game objects. Actually, I'm not even sure if I need to do this. Actually, I'm still need to get reacquainted with the code, so I'm gonna check my main method, or not my main method, my main class, and I'm gonna check the rectangle collide. That does return an array list of game objects, so I'm pretty sure I don't need to do it. Where does my player class? There we go. So I'm pretty sure I don't actually need to do that. Sorry about that. I'm just gonna set this to main rectangle collide. I'm gonna do rectangle collide between the player and our x plus size and y plus size. That just creates a box the same shape as the player. So we're just going to do a rectangle collide of everything that's touching the player. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through this list, so for each game object, geo, and objects. So we're going to look through that entire list, and if geo.getType is equal to game object dot item id so this is we'll test if it's an item then this is where we're going to actually do the item pickup so that's a lot simpler than what we were doing and yeah so here's the item pickup first off in our item class we're going to have the actual pickup of the item so that's where we pick up we say we've just picked up and we remove it. So we'll do that. So we'll say geo cast as an item geo dot pickup. I think I need to put that entire thing in parentheses, but that's okay. Dot pick up. And there. And so that'll pick up the item. That doesn't add us that doesn't add it to our inventory anymore. Yeah, see that just removes the item and says we have picked up the item. And really, we can even get rid of this method after this, but, yeah. So, but for now, I'll just do it this way. 
And after that, we need to do what we did right here, which was just add that to our inventory. So we'll add item, I, item, geo. And there. And really, at this point, we can, like I said, get rid of that. So I'm going to do that. I'll just get rid of this method entirely because really, we don't need it at this point. So we'll get, say, you just picked up, we remove the item, and whoops. And we add the item to our inventory. And we're getting an error. Plus, ah. You just picked up, that should be geo.move. So in here we'll need item geo. And really this is just filling in all the data so it's right. Dot get name. And yeah. So now we have our new system of doing item pickup. And I still believe there's a few more things I need to change before I get this working in, but I can completely get rid of these three methods. And it enormously simplifies our item code at the expense of doing just a tiny bit of code here, which I think is a worthy trade-off. So, lastly in our cube class, we no longer need to do this, we just need to do the init method. So, really, and we don't even need to take in the player anymore, so we can get rid of that parameter. And that means we need to go into our game, and we need to change this to just passing in a size. So, yeah. There we go, we now have the cube and our new item system. We can get rid of that import. So just got rid of a bunch of code. It's a lot cleaner. And let's test it. Because if it doesn't work, that's what it defeats the point. So I clicked run, it's building, and it's running, and come on, and there we go, control is working, and you just picked up the cube, three, and I know that was supposed to be something important, what was that supposed to be again? I completely forgot. Three, well, okay, well I don't remember what that was supposed to be, but Apparently it's working. So yeah, we now have a new item system. The next thing I'm going to clean up is the inventory class. Now this is actually really easy cleanup. There's pretty okay for the most part. The only thing is, right here, this code's the exact same thing as right here. So just to make it a little bit more flexible, I'm just going to call remove sub i. And it makes it a little bit simpler, and it's just a little bit nicer. So yeah. That cleans up the inventory, and after that nice and simple cleanup, now I'm going to do a little bit more major cleanup, and it has to do with the main class. Mass? The main class. In the main class, I have these methods called sphere collide and rectangle collide. Now the thing about these is, really, these methods have nothing to do with the main class. They're really all about the game class, and it would be really nice to be able to do these in the game class instead of having to do them in the main class. So I'm going to change this around a bit. I'm going to make the game class keep track of an instance of itself, which is a little bit weird to think about, but what that's going to let me do is it's going to let me make these methods static so I can call them with whatever game instance there is. And that's going to be a little bit nicer, because that way we don't have to call through the main class and then into the game class. So it's going to be a lot easier. And yeah. So, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create the instance of the game. So it's going to be private static game game. And you could argue that this would be better to keep as public, but... I'm going to keep it as private for now, just because I, that way I can easily change it to public later, and it's going to be a little bit harder to change it to private later. So that way, you know, that's the reason I'm doing it this way. So now I'm going to need a public static method to set the game. So it's going to take in a game G. It's going to just set whatever game is to G. I also need a public static... Oh, public static void, and this will give me a public static 
game, get game. So basically, it's just getter and setters. So it's going to be get game, and it's going to just return game. And I'm really debating if it would be better just to do this as public. Let's see, do I want this to do this as public? Yeah, yes, I do, actually. I'm just going to do it as public. So, scrap that. And I deleted player, too, because I'm a genius. I'm just going to keep make it public. Because that way it's a little bit simpler. So it's going to be public game game. Probably not the best coding style, but yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this game right here. I'm going to just essentially use the game in game for that now. So, I'm just going to replace everywhere I have game to game dot game. And... Whoops. So, just copy and paste, pretty much. Game dot game, game dot game, game dot game, game dot game. Yep. And... That way... The instance of the game is actually inside the game class. And you notice, since this is referring to that, we can actually get rid of these essentially. Because the instance of game is in here. So now what I can do is I can make these static. That's step two. So public static. And this will not work out of the box because of this. Same issue we had before. But now that we have this, we can do game.object. Now of course we'll need some way of actually getting this, so I'm going to create a getter for it. So that'll be under here. It's going to be public. Um, it's going to be array list of game objects. For, so public array list of game objects called get object. Just going to return objects. I'm just going to say game dot get object, and that solves the issue. So. Now that's static, and there we go. So yeah, and this since actually that's fine. So these are static methods. I'm not sure where I want to put them. I've always sort of debated where I want to put static stuff. I think I'm actually just going to move these to the top. So this is all the static stuff, and this is all the instantiated stuff. That actually doesn't make any sense, because that's above the variables. Actually, no, I'm just going to keep it the old way. I can change it later. I'm not really sure where I want these, but... Yeah. So the next step, really, is just delete these. Because we don't need them anymore. The instance of game is now in the game class. That's going to cause a few errors, but that's fine. And Actually, wait. We can now control shift i because that fixes a few of those errors, and yeah, well, not really errors, warnings, blah blah blah. So now I can just place everywhere it says main to game. Game.rectangle collide, and why do you not work? Cannot find symbol game. Okay, I'm imported. Make sure you actually import the game class, because that's. I can actually get rid of that. So yeah, just place out of game, which makes it really easy since all the main things are underlined. And that should be everything in the player class, so now we just need the um, enemy class. Same story. Where's the error? Game.SphereCollide. Yes, that's fine. And control shift i to fix the import. That should fix everything. So yeah. There we go, I think that's a little bit of an easier way to do it. It does make the game class... Well, it doesn't really change the game class at all, does it? So yeah. So that's a little bit more of a major cleanup, but really it's fine. Where's the player class? I want to go back to the player class. Oh. Okay. Don't have a reason why I wanted to go back to the player class, I just did, so yeah. So now I'm going to test the code. We're going to see what happens. If everything works as expected, the code works. If not, everything's been destroyed somehow. So I'm going to go over to the item. Item pickup still works. I'm going to go over to the enemy. Enemy is still attacking us. We're you're still attacking the enemy. Wait. We're still attacking the enemy. It's saying we have no target. Which is... It's a total lie, but oh well. 
That might be a bug, actually. Why don't you fix that? So, yeah. Okay, there we go. That's pretty much... Okay, there's that. And I looked at the attack code, and as it turns out, yes, there is a bug in here. And that's why we're getting no target. And the bug is actually pretty simple. Look at the parameters here. It might not be completely obvious, but the way they set up rectangles in the rectangle class, if you pass in parameters this way, you'll get a rectangle with a negative area. And that's no good. So, all you have to do, really, is just switch the Y parameter. That's all you have to do to fix it. So, that'll be Y minus attack range, and that will be Y. And that's for backwards and for left. Those are the ones that weren't working. And you'll notice, if I attack him facing backwards now, you'll notice it's starting to attack. But you'll also notice I'm able to attack him from way up there. And that's because there's another problem. Y... What's our Y position? That's the bottom of the square. So that's not the actual correct Y value. There's actually a second hidden bug. You actually have to do Y minus attack range plus size. Because this is supposed to be from the edge, the opposing edge. So this is, the attack range is measured from the top down. So yeah, you have to add size to that for it to be equivalent to the top edge. Since you're measuring the Y value from the bottom edge. It's pretty basic math, but it matters. So, ever the left, same problem, except with x. So, x minus attack range, and that becomes x. And again, this will have to be x plus size in order to count for the edge issue. So yeah, here we go. Now, if I test it now, if I attack him facing upwards, that works. If I attack him facing left, actually that's right, that works. If I attack him facing left, that works. And if I attack him facing down, well, that works. And just to just sort of get over an annoying issue that I've sort of come across when playing with this so far, if the enemy walks up to us when we're facing him, and we start attacking, it won't actually attack because it'll be right on the border. So I'm going to increase our attack range by one pixel just to fix that. So that way if I go like this and just wait for him to come up to me, I can just spam the spacebar, and it'll keep attacking it. And I don't have to sort of just move forward one to actually start facing him. That was just a slight annoyance I had, and that fixes it. So, um, yeah, there you go. And I think the final thing I really want to clean up is the delay class, because I don't think the methods are as well-named as they should be. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this boolean method up right here, just because it bothers me that it's in sort of the middle of a bunch of void methods. Second thing I'm going to do, I'm going to rename it. That's not the rename command. What's, where's the rename command? Oh, we just control R. Never mind. I'm going to rename it to is active, because that way it just sort of indicates that it's a boolean method. And same thing here. Delay dot is over. So, yeah, this, the start method, I'm going to rename to the restart method, because it doesn't just begin the delay, it also sets it at the beginning. So, the restart method, reset, also I'm pretty sure needs to be renamed, because that's not really what it does. I'm just going to name this to stop, because that's really what the method is doing, it's stopping the delay. And I, I'm going to leave that as it is, because that's pretty much what it's doing. It's sort of just taking the delay and bringing it to the end of whatever it is. So yeah, I'm going to look at the, um, why not, the enemy class, just to see how this code looks now. So, restart attack delay. That's its own method, apparently. Oh, <laughs> and it just calls attack delay dot restart. Well, don't see why I need a method for that. So, I'm going to get rid of that. Attack delay dot restart. And when I actually attack... Where's the attack method? Oh, of course, right here. Okay. Attack delay dot end. 
Maybe I should just say put at end or set over. Hmm. I think end is not descriptive enough. So I'm gonna rename it. And I'm gonna rename it to what should I rename it to? Oh I've thought about it, and I think terminate really sort of encapsulates what it's doing. It's terminating the delay. It's setting it to being completely over. So, yeah. I set it to terminate. Let's see how that looks in the enemy class. So attack delay. creates a new delay, and then it terminates it. Good. I think that makes a lot more sense, because it's saying, you know, the delay, it's over. You need to terminate it. So... Yeah, probably going to go back and rename that a little bit later as well, but it works for now. I'm going to see how it looks in the player class, wherever you are. And yeah, attack delay dot restart. And in the constructor, create new attack delay. Really, I can just do it right here, dot terminate. Can't I? New delay 500 dot terminate. And probably not the cleanest way to do it, even if it does work, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. So, um, yeah, there you go. That's really, I think, all the cleanup I want to do. I'll go look after this, but I think that's everything I want to do. So, yeah. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Tabularessa0606, because he posted a lot of really, really good cleanup suggestions in the comments, and a lot of them were implemented. I think even just renaming the label was the only thing I came up with on my own, but... Yeah, so thank you very, yeah, so thank you very, very much, because this, I really like this new cleanup code a lot better. So thank you. So with all that cleanup out of the way, what I'd like to do is I'd like to pick up with where I left off in video seven, which is implementing equipable items. So you can like pick up a sword and equip it and it'll do a bunch of interesting stuff, or whatever. And yeah, so I'd just like to create a few things that would make that a little bit easier. And I strongly doubt we will be able to get anything even close to working in the time I have left in this video, but I can at least get started. So I'm going to go to my item package, and I'm going to start by creating just a new class. And this will be for equipable items. And the reason I'm creating a new class for equipable items is because if I just used the item class, it would be harder to distinguish between what's equipable and what's not, I suppose. And th so this way I just have a, a single distinct class for everything that's equipable. So this is of course going to extend item, extends item, because Java uses proper grammar. And what I'm going to add to item is first off just a public, actually no, not public, private int called slot. And what the slot of the item will be, and actually I'm just going to close everything else just because that's getting way too cluttered. Keep item up for reference. And game object. But as I was saying, what slot will do is it'll just say where you'll be able to clip whip it. So it'll be, be some number, and maybe number one is your hand, like you're holding a sword, you're holding a staff, you're holding the bunch of, I don't know, you're holding something. I don't know, maybe that's slot one, maybe slot two is your chest, maybe your shirt, your whatever you're wearing on your chest, I don't know. It's going to be slot three is your head, what, what your helmet is, what your hat is, or I don't know. So that's what the slot's going to be. It's just going to be where this item will be equipable. So, I'm going to override the init method in order to take this into account. So I'm going to gay. Okay, do at override. And my new init method is going to actually hang on one second. Where is the init method called in the item? Actually, hang on, that's not the issue right now. The issue at hand is we need another parameter here. So we have the name. And we're also going to want the slot. Now... 
Okay. Actually, hang on. I don't, no, I don't want to change that here. I don't want to take it into this parameter. I... Hmm... Actually, yes, I do want to take it into this parameter. So, int slot and this dot slot equals slot. There we go. So that doesn't need to be overridden anymore. So there. And... Really, I think that's just about everything I want here. So, hmm. I guess the only thing I can really do other than this is create some constant for what number is what. It's like, which slot number corresponds to what. So public static, not void, int. Well, public static final int, sorry. And I'll say weapon slot equals one public static final int head slot equals two. I'm just making these up. Public static final int um body slot equals three and public static final int leg slot equals four. And I'll see where I go from there. And also, if I use all these constants in code, like I've done before, I can change the numbers without affecting anything. So yeah. So now we have equipable items. And let's create one. So I'm going to create a new Java class called Sword of Debugging. The Sword of Debugging. Why not? I think it's appropriately named since this is all about Java code. It's going to extend equipable item and it's going to have a public sort of debugging. And how am I going to do this? Well, it's going to have a float size x float it's not float is it? Mm. Yes, no. Float x, float y. I'm just going to copy what I have here, pretty much. And so, in fact, yeah, I'll just even straight up copy it. And it's going to have a public static final float size. Final float size is 32. And yeah, I'm just straight up copying it from the cube item, because why not? We already have it here. The legendary sword of debuggery. So that's a name. And I also need slot. It'll be in the weapon slot. So there. That will initialize my sword of debugging. It has a slot, has everything. But sword has a few other properties, so I might as well add those. Private and I don't know, how about mm, damage? And really, that's all I can think of right now. So, hmm. Okay, so just, I'll just init damage to 3. Because why not? So 3, and I'll figure out how this incorporates into the formula a little bit later. So yeah, we have sort of debugging, has damage, has everything, and yeah. So next step really is just inventory. We need inventories that can actually support all this. So I'm just going to close out of everything, just to sort of have blank canvas to work with. And I'm going to go to inventory. So in inventory, some of the items are going to be equipable, some of them won't be. We're going to need some way of having equipped items stored, and equipping them, and sort of moving them back and forth between our inventory and equipped item slots. And really I think it's fair that equipment is actually in a separate class, so I'm going to create a new class. So it's going to be a new class called Equipment. So, I'm just going to have a... just I'm copying some of the code from item or the inventory because it's going to be the same. So, yes. Except this won't be an array of items. This is going to be an array of equipable items. Private equipable item array items. Uh, control shift I. 
And yeah. So this is how it's gonna work. Every time I want to equip something, it's going to look for the slot and see what happens. So, equipment. Now actually this is gonna be a little bit interesting because I'm gonna need to add this to the player. And again, it's gonna have to interact with the inventory. So, private equipment. I think it's called equipment. And my constructor, I'm gonna say equipment was new equipment and so I'm just going to need the constructor, so private equipment and I can say how many items I'm going to have. So items equals new equipable item array. How many slots am I going to have? I'm going to have space for... hmm... Actually, I'll just keep track of that in the equipable items list. We have a public static final... Is that really the best solution? And yes, it is. Num slots. Right now I have four slots. So, four slots. Actually, I'm starting at one, so five slots. But I can actually resolve that really easily, just starting that at zero. So zero, one, two, three. New couple item of size equipable item item dot num slots. So there. Now I have this array of items. But how about equipping an item? Well, create a public void equip. And it'll take in some equipable item. Item. And... Hmm. So, of course we'll need to say items sub... Actually, it's better... Before I start implementing a bunch of stuff, I want to just see whatever methods I'm going to need. So I'm going to say equip public void de-equip and then take some int slot and really I think that's everything I need for now. Of course there's going to be boosts from equipment and such, but that's another story for another time. Right now let's just get everything working. So equip, okay so first off I'm going to say item dot get slot, which I have not implemented yet because I'm See, this is what I get when I'm jumping ahead and I don't implement methods. So I'm going to use alt insert like someone suggested, and I'm going to create a getter for slot. Generate, and there you go. So item.getSlot. And items sub item.getSlot. I just, I'm just going to write int index equals items.getItem.getSlot. Because that way, it'll just be a little bit easier to work with. And later I can substitute that in if I want. So if items sub index is null, then index is just going to equal item dot... Well, yeah, item, really. And then items sub index is going to equal item. So that's putting whatever item we have at that index, in that slot. So, that's one. Now, two, here's the other issue. What if there's something already there? Then the item will have to go back to the inventory. So, first off, take current index and send it to the inventory. And after that, item sub index equals item. So really, I should just put this at the end, since that's in both cases, and say, if item sub index is not equal to null, take current index and send it to the inventory. Yes. So, there's the equipment method, and deequip will be take essentially doing that. So actually, I can just replace this with the deequip method. So I'll move this here and do deequip sub index. 
And so our equip method's finished. We just need a way of de-equipping things. That's the only challenge we have left. So I really think the best way to do this is just to keep inventory. I keep some reference to the inventory that it's supposed to deposit stuff in. So I'm going to have a private inventory env, and I'm going to take that into the constructor. So actually I need to put in the constructor first, so inventory env, and of course this dot env equals env. So yeah, there's our inventory, and in my equipment in this constructor I'm just going to pass in inventory. So here, what I can do now is when I'm de-equipping something, I can say env.add, and it will just add whatever items at that slot is. So that does that, and I'm pretty sure I'm missing something here, because that doesn't seem right for some reason. Actually, no, it doesn't. Never mind. So, yeah. So that takes current index and says it to the inventory. And also, items sub slot now equals no. And really, that should be just about everything. Now, this doesn't handle the case of what if our inventory is full, or such like stuff like that. And that's going to change things around a little bit. So now that we have all this set up, I really think that's the next step. What if the inventory is full? Because addition can fail. Well, not addition. It adding things to the inventory. That type of addition can fail. It's hard to make regular 2 plus 2 addition fail. But anyways. So, we're going to start handling the case of what if the inventory is full. So, yeah. That's going to be a bit of a problem. So, since adding things to inventory can fail, it only makes sense that de-equipping an item can fail. So this will be a boolean method, and since equipping relies on de-equipping in some cases, equipping can also fail. So these will now be boolean methods. So now, here's the thing. If env.items.addSlot, if that works, then items.slot equals null, and return true. Otherwise, we return false. And I'm going to double check my items code after this to make sure that addition actually fails properly. But yeah. So now, if it's not equal to null, if we de equip, and then, if we don't de equip, I should say, then we return false. Because that means we can't de equip the items, so therefore it fails. Otherwise, everything should proceed as normal. So otherwise, we get here, and then we return true. So that's actually pretty simple, overall. Now I just need to make sure inventory item actually fails. So if first freeze item that length, that works. So yeah. We now have items that can be equipped, really. We can now equip items, even though we're not using it anywhere, and I should actually make these lowercase, because that's sort of the convention I've been following. So de-equip, and yeah. So that really should pretty much conclude everything I want to do here. So yeah, thank you. And why is this giving me a warning? Field equipment is not used. That's okay, We it will be used. Thank you, and I will 